That's right, I got the Fairlight desktop console here because we are talking about how we can mix music, how we can make it sound awesome, how we can work with instruments and singing and vocals and do all that fun stuff right here in DaVinci Resolve Fairlight. Now, if you don't edit music, don't go anywhere because there's a lot of tips and tricks in these videos in this series that are gonna help you when it comes to sound effects, music, dialogue, mixing everything together. You're still gonna find a lot of tips helpful. Now, we already talked about how we can record multi-track into DaVinci Resolve. We've got 32 tracks we're working with. We talked about the Fairlight panel a little bit, ran over some of the features and how it works a little bit. And today we're gonna talk about getting organized here in Fairlight before we jump in and really use this console and really mix, do some EQ, some dynamics, make our music sound good. So let's jump into Resolve, get this file organized so that when we start our actual editing of the audio, it goes nice and smooth for us. So I know we're all waiting to use the Fairlight panel here, but we need to get organized first. So let's take a look at what we have going on in our file here. In our file, when we recorded our 32 tracks, I've got a couple different things going on. First, this whole section here, from the beginning all the way over to here, all these tracks are just rehearsal tracks, right? So I don't want those. I just want the actual Final Go service track. I'm gonna just go ahead and select them all and I'm gonna hit the backspace key to delete them. So now that those are gone and out of the way, I'm just gonna select the rest of them by hitting Command or Control A and I'm gonna bring everything to the beginning of my timeline. Now, if I zoom in a little bit here, I'm gonna just click outside my tracks here. We can see some of our tracks have different songs in them, and that's what each one of these uh, larger waveforms are. And some tracks, we actually didn't record anything, right? We've got 32 tracks we recorded from the soundboard, the X32, but we didn't actually have inputs on all 32 tracks. So I've gone ahead and I've muted the tracks that don't have anything on there. Now we could just delete these tracks. And if I never wanted to go back to the mixer and play from DaVinci Resolve back into the mixer, back into the whole uh, church setting so I could play with the X32 mixer and, and mix there, then I could just go ahead and delete the tracks. But in this case, I don't wanna do that. What I wanna do is actually hide the tracks. So to do that, what I wanna do is come on up to my index right here. And in my index, I can see all of my tracks. And on the bottom here, we've got groups, but I'm not worried about the groups right now. So I know that I want to hide or get rid of, hide is what I really wanna say, all of the tracks that are muted because those tracks have nothing in them. So to get rid of them or to hide them, all I have to do is click on the little eyeball. So we're gonna hide all the ones that are muted here. So go through and just hide them. Now, just to clarify, the reason why I'm just hiding things and not deleting them is because if I ever wanted to take Fairlight back to my church and play all of this audio back into the board so then I could play it in the church live, I need everything set up the exact same way as I recorded it. So by just hiding the tracks, they're still there. I didn't change anything. And we can just repatch everything exactly how it was recorded. And when I play it, back into the board, everything's gonna work out and come out just as it did when I recorded it. So that's why I'm just hiding tracks and not deleting them. If you're not worried about that, you can go ahead and delete them and that's just fine too. It depends on what you wanna do later on after the fact. So the next thing I wanna do now that I can see only the tracks that I wanna see is to start to color code things, right? I wanna take things that are similar, like all the vocals, for example, and I wanna give them the same color. So when I'm looking either on the panel itself or in DaVinci Resolve, I can see things very clearly as far as what is what, just by looking at the color. So to change the color, I'm gonna come in, I'm gonna select my vocal tracks here, and I know I have a vocal down at the bottom. I'm gonna right click, change track color, I'm gonna make these teal. And I can also make the lav mic teal. Now that is the, the pastor's mic, so, but that's okay, I can still make that teal as well. We've got electric guitars, so here's one electric and here's another. So I'm gonna right click and we're gonna change those to be, oh, let's say, dark blue, navy. I have drums. So for drums, I'm gonna select all of my drums here. So we've got several tracks of drums. We've got the hi-hat, the kick, the snare, toms one, toms two, and cymbal. I'm gonna right click, change the color, and let's go with lime green for the drums. The track or pad is kind of like a pad that we have that runs underneath all the music. So we'll just pick a color for that. Let's go pink. For the click track, that's the track that keeps the beat for everybody. We can go ahead and change the color of that. Let's make it purple. For keys, I have a right and left channel keys. I'm gonna right click, change the color. For keys, let's go with pink. 
I have an acoustic guitar, and since it's a guitar, I'm gonna make this a color that's similar to the other guitars. We use navy for the other guitars, so I'm gonna make the acoustic guitar blue. And for the bass, I'm gonna right click on there. Bass, what do we have? We can make the bass, let's go with beige. Now I did add back in the sub bass, which I missed before. So we're gonna go ahead and change that to brown because it matches kind of with the bass, which is uh, we made a tan color or beige. And then we have a saxophone. We're gonna change his color to orange. So now when I zoom out or zoom down on my timeline, I can see everything. I can kind of see that everything is grouped together by color, right? I kind of know what's happening. Now you can take your tracks and rearrange them if you want. So if we wanted to put the uh, bass and let's see, bass and the sub bass next to each other, I can come in my index here, click, hold and drag it down by the bass. And now we have our bass and sub bass next to each other. Now this will mess up the order a little bit if you were to go back and then wanna play it back into your soundboard. So just be careful if you move tracks around a little bit, they may not match up when you go to put it right back into uh, you know, your mixing board, for example. So in this case, that's all right. I can always move it back later, but for now let's group them together so it makes sense and looks visually, uh, looks like it makes sense here on the screen. So we've kind of color coordinated everything. We went ahead and named all the tracks. So if you haven't named your tracks, it's always a good idea to do that. Right here, we've got our vocals. We have a lav mic. We've got a saxophone, two guitars. We've got all of our drums. We have a click. Uh, which we're not going to want to hear in our final mix, but it's there because it was going through the board. We recorded it. We have a keys, keyboards, left and right channel here. We uh, have an acoustic guitar and bass and a sub bass and then another vocal down here at the bottom. So a couple things we want to do. I actually want to group together our keyboards, right? Because the right and left channels are going to go together. So I always want to move those faders up and down together. So I am going to come to my mixer. I'm going to expand this guy out a little bit. I'm going to find my keyboards. Right here we have our keys left and right. So here you can see uh, they're not connected, right? But I want them to work together, right? I'm always going to want both sides to go up equally. And right now they're not even panned. So, oh, they are panned. I guess I did pan them. So on the keys left, we can make sure that this is to the left left over here, because it looks like they're backwards here. And then the keys right, we're going to pan that to the right. So that way our keys are going to the correct spot that they're supposed to, right? But to get these two to move together, what I want to do is actually send them to a bus, right? So that the bus can control both of them at the same time. So to do that, I'm going to come on up to Fairlight bus format. We're going to go ahead and add in a bus. I'm going to call this keys. I'm going to make it a stereo track, change our color to match the keys, which is what do we have pink, I think, and hit OK. So now we need to send those two channels for the keys over to that bus. So pretty easy to do that. Our bus outputs right here under keys. I'm going to select plus and keys, plus and keys. Now I want it to go to the keys bus, but I don't want it to go out of resolve based on these two faders. So I'm going to actually turn off the bus one. So now those keys will go to the bus, but if I scroll and open up my bus area a little bit, we can see we have our keys bus and it's not getting sent anywhere yet. So we wouldn't actually hear anything, even if I played through. We don't hear anything because that bus isn't going anywhere. So I'm gonna click on the plus. We're gonna send it to bus one. So now our keys are getting sent to the bus one and now we should hear some music. And instead of having to move two faders at once, we can now just move one bus fader and that's gonna work both our right and left channels for us. So it works out perfect. So now that we have our keys tracks going to a bus, we also want to group them together. So when we move the faders here, they'll move together. So I'm just going to double click them to reset them. I want to come up into the group section right here. I'm going to go ahead and click add a group. Now I've already created a keys group, but here's how you'd create it. You go create group. Then this window here, I'm going to call this keys two because I already have a keys one. Now down under controls, this is where you want to make sure you have fader checked. And I'm actually just going to check all of them so that these two tracks always work together. Next, I'm going to come down to my add channels and I'm going to find my keys right. I'm going to add it. Keys left, I'm going to add it. And then I'm going to hit save. So now we can see they're in the same group. And when I grab one fader, they move at the same time. So this way I'm not accidentally adjusting the right or the left channel independently of the other. And this kind of does the same thing as our bus, but you've got options on how you can set it up. Now with that same concept in mind, the other thing we want to do is work with our drums a little bit. So I want to create a bus for our drums that'll allow us to raise and lower everything once we get the balance the way that we would like it. So I'm going to, again, create another bus for our drums. going to go ahead and click Fairlight, bus format, gonna add a bus. We're going to call it drums. I'll make it stereo, change our color to be lime green so it matches with the drums and hit OK. So now I'm going to come over in my tracks to my drums. And we're just going to send all of these over to that bus. So we've got our hi-hat, drums, kick, drums, kick, 
snare, toms one, toms two, cymbal. Now I don't want it to go out from here because I want to be able to adjust everything as a whole through the bus. So if I scroll over my bus section, boom, here's our drum bus. And again, we have to send it to our main output, which is bus one. So now that we've got our file all organized, everything is color coded. We can see things at a glance. We've got certain items grouped together, like our keys. We can just start to work through our file a little bit and really kind of know where everything is at a glance, which makes it a big difference when you're trying to work through your file. You don't have to hunt around for everything. We've named our tracks, we've color coded things, We've grouped things together if they need to be grouped. And it's just really getting organized right from the start here. So as we move forward in the audio editing process, things make sense. They're organized. They're easy to find. And you don't waste time looking for things because you don't know where they are. So if you're enjoying this series about how we can record directly into Resolve, work with the Fairlight console, how we can mix music right here in DaVinci Resolve, go ahead, give this video a like for me. Subscribe to the channel. We're almost to 100K probably be over 100k if you're seeing this anytime soon and uh you know if you got questions definitely leave it down below because i love digging into all this stuff figuring it out and answering the questions that you guys might have all right with that said guys i'm off to work on this some more edit some awesome music and i will see you in the next video peace